Babe, are you on this thing? This, this, are you watching this webinar? Oh, okay. It says there's a Steven down there. I just wanted to see it's a PH. I just didn't know. Ready? Okay. Well, welcome everybody. We're so excited to be here for our fourth uh, webinar in our series uh, brought to you by Lynn University's Career Connections. Um, this week's topic is springboarding uh, your career. So what that means is when one job or experience leads to another and basically leads ultimately to some to success in your career. Um, we are honored here to have three expert panelists with us, which we will introduce shortly. Um, just to give you the format of today's webinar, uh, we are going to have, we have four predetermined questions that we're going to ask of, of each of the panelists. Um, then we are going to open this up to, uh, and actually throughout the whole webinar, we welcome questions from the audience. We'll field the questions from the text bar at the bottom right. And uh, we'd like to make it as interactive as possible. Um, my name is Professor Gary Carlin. Um, I, am, I teach in the College of Communication and Design. My focus is advertising and public relations. Um, previously, I was the vice president of marketing for Hasbro Toy Company. And I am very honored to have my co-moderator with us today, Dr. Stephanie Powers. And Stephanie, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm delighted to be here today, and I'm so excited to hear from these three panelists. Two are Lynn alum, which is great and excellent, and one is definitely a favorite to Lynn, who has spoke at many different events, and I'm really looking forward to today's topic. Just to give you a little bit of brief background on myself, my background is in journalism and PR. I have been at Lynn now for over 15 years, and in addition to teaching journalism and public relation courses, I am also the assistant dean in the College of Communication and Design. So again, welcome, and we are just so excited to hear about springboarding your career. So we're going to get started by introducing our panelists. Our first panelist that we will be introducing is Anthony Greco. And Anthony is, like I said, an Alin alum, and he is also the sales and marketing director, or he does sales and marketing at the Boca Raton Championship. So Anthony, would you like to describe your background a little bit? Oh, we can't hear you. Better? Perfect. Sorry about that. Yes, yeah, so I would say thanks, Stephanie, Gary, Barb, uh, Lise, and Laura. I appreciate uh, you having us uh, in this uh, webinar. Uh, yeah, so I was a graduate alumni, alum of O2, and um, basically my, you know, my first, you know, um, you know, my I graduated business O2, and basically my first six years of my career were springboard, and. Um, I've been, uh, I currently do now, I'm with a management firm and basically we produce uh, six PGA tour events. So everything you see that goes into a PGA golf tournament, our firm puts on and we have six events around the country. So uh, basically it's, we're essentially we're big party planners, event planners. Wow, sounds great. Well, thank you. We're looking forward to hearing more from you. Next, we'll move forward to our next panelist who I must say was one of my students in her early days at Lynn University. So it's 
very exciting for me to introduce you all to Eva D'Amato. So hi, Eva. Hi, hi. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I, uh, I currently work as leisure sales manager for Discover the Palm Beaches. Um, so what Discover the Palm Beaches is simply is it's our destination marketing organization. So we are tasked to increase tourism to the county. Uh, specifically, what I do is I work with what's called travel trade. So that's travel agents, um, OTAs, which are the Expedias of the world, and additional operators to package uh, travel and make it enticing for guests to join us in the Palm Beaches. This creates additional uh, revenue for our county additional taxes um, are collected, and then all of that goes back into our restaurants, uh, our hotels, our attractions. So just making this um, place that we live in even better. Wow, great. And last but not least, we would like to introduce Olivia Hollis. So hi, Olivia. Hi. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, my career path is quite diverse, but currently I am the founder and creative director of a company called Protect My Shoes. I invented the patented shoe stuffer because I'm a shoe addict and um, I wanted to get rid of the tissue paper stuffers that come with all of your shoe purchases and came up with this one size fits all little handmade shoe insert. So, um, and I know we'll dive more into that. And I'm also the director of community relations at Boca Magazine, which is uh, one of our local publications in Boca. And uh, uh, it's really a great part. It's a great company to be a part of as well, so. Excellent. Thank you and welcome again to our, our panelists. Um, so now we'd like to begin with our first uh, predetermined question. And again, the format here is just what we'll ask you just to kind of raise your hand if you want to be the first to answer. But we'd like to hear from all of the panelists in terms of each of these questions, if possible. So the first one is, uh, what's an example of a springboard in your career? Uh, and did you expect that that was going to lead anywhere at the time it happened? Anybody want to go volunteer? Olivia. <laughs> <All> <laughs> it's, like right. being in a it's like being in a classroom. Right? <laughs> and I love being a student, so I, I would love to go back to school, and Lynn will definitely be a top choice. But <laughs> we love it. Come well, on. Great to hear. <laughs> Uh, something that springboarded my career, I would say, is you know one of the things that we do at Protect My Shoes is we have a private label division. So we work with brands to create their own branded version of our shoe inserts. Um, Saks Fifth Avenue, for instance, is one of our clients. I have a little you know sample of what we do. Um, but for me, I think when we got the account with Sarah Jessica Parker for her shoe line, that definitely was a springboard because it kind of confirmed that I was on the right path. Um, and, you know, she's obviously such a style icon and, um, you know, definitely someone I look up to. So it was really exciting when we got her, um, her, um, her project two years ago. So I think that was one of those defining moments for me. It just made, it just it reiterated that I was on the right path. <laughs> so, and sometimes as an entrepreneur, when you're alone in the in the process, you kind of need those little clues that you're good. Right. And correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Sarah also a shoe addict? Oh, Chris, she's majorly <laughs> pretty much lost Manolo LeBlanc's career because of Sex in the City, and uh, and her collection, SJP collections, is really beautiful. So, yeah. Yeah. That name alone got me excited, so that's very impressive. Yeah. Excellent. So Eve, I think you had your hand up next. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, kind of a funny position I took in a way, really great position. But right after uh, college, once I graduated, I went to school for business administration, graduated and took a job as a guest services coordinator at the Breakers um, located in Palm Beach. And what a guest services coordinator uh, uh, boiled into was a valet cashier. So I loved the idea of stepping foot in the Breakers and working for such a wonderful hotel. Um, and the valet cashier job was kind of interesting because I was running around with valet runners, more or less managing valet runners um, who were much younger than me and kind of just had summer jobs and things like that. And 
I was taking keys and checking in cars and delivering luggage and your the front door. So you're answering questions as to, you know, where is Worth Avenue and how do I get on the shuttle to go to a restaurant? Um, so there was just a lot involved in it. And I just never, I didn't think that that was even really a position. Um, and I certainly didn't think it was the position that it was going into it, but it gave me so much uh, insight into the hotel and working the front door, but it was just such a funny position. And there was one time where I had asked uh, one of the valet runners to go and get a sweater out of the vehicle. And by the time he got to the vehicle, he didn't remember what I asked for. So he brought back a tennis racket and I had the guest sitting there. And I, I had to kindly explain, you're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, we brought your tennis racket, will you be needing it? So it was just kind of a funny job, but it was, it was a perfect step into my career. And was your, was your initial goal to be in hospitality? So my initial goal was to be in sales and I kind of wasn't sure about getting into hospitality because I really, I didn't study it. Uh, it was more business administration, marketing and sales with a minor in communications, which is why I got to take those lovely classes with uh, Dr. Powers. And um, I, I just kind of took a leap when I wanted to start at the Breakers because I knew it was such a, a great place to be. Um, and it has an amazing, amazing uh, leadership and uh, professional development um, courses and things that they do. So I didn't know I was going to be in hospitality, but I'm certainly not upset about it. <laughs> well, I think that's great. And I think that's so significant for all our students listening today in particular to understand that sometimes a job might not be your dream job, but that job can lead you and hence springboard you to a career. And you're a great Absolutely. example of that. So excellent. Okay, Anthony, would you like to share your thoughts? Yeah, so, uh, you know, exactly what Stephanie said. And, and basically, when I look at this question, the, the first six years of my career really were a springboard. And it actually all started at Lynn University. And, uh, you know, I, I tell the story. I think it's a great story. And, you know, it was, I was a senior. It was my uh, second semester of uh, my senior year. I was on campus. And same thing. I didn't shave. I had a ripped T-shirt on and jeans. And one of my professors, who was my mentor, he was my uh, business communication and economics uh, professor, Chris Malfitano. I still think helps out a little bit. Mm -hmm. But he said, basically, he said, Anthony, he said, go home. Again, this is senior year. I had no idea what I wanted to do. You know, I was graduating in May. And he's like, go home, shower, shave, put a shirt and tie on. He goes, this big Fortune 30 company is coming to campus to do a corporate lecture. He goes, just go put a shirt and tie on, introduce yourself, and write the guy a thank you note. That's all he said, you know. So, again, I didn't know what I was doing. I'd never heard of the company. Again, it was a $30 billion company down the road. Their headquarters was in, was in Boca Raton by the mall. So sure enough, two guys came. I, I listened. I did what Chris said. Wrote him a thank you note, and basically he's, he's like, "Hey, do you need an internship?" Just like that. And at the time, again, this was 2002. I said, "Sure." I didn't know what I was getting myself into. So uh, I took the job. Basically, I graduated May 4th. Went to work like May 6th, and just went to work in the. Uh, I worked for Tyco International, and I was in the tax department. And I was the furthest thing from a tax account or a, a CPA, but it was a job. And uh, you know, it started out. So long story short, I worked with them for four years, uh, and, and then I got a, a pink slip to get laid off. So I was in I spent four years in corporate tax and finance, and then I got laid off um, after four years, and uh, I went back to my roots, which was golf, and where I ca used to caddy at a golf course. So one of the members took a liking to me and offered me a job in the timeshare business. So what that did allowed me to springboard from finance to market sales and marketing. So then I spent a, a year out in Las Vegas in the timeshare business, came back to uh, Boca Raton and worked for Blue Green, another public company in Boca Raton in the timeshare business. Um, and with that led to uh, about 10 months uh, uh, job. And then 08, I believe it was 07, 08, the economy tanked. I got laid off again. So basically I got laid off three times within you know six six years. And uh, so I kind of you know, reevaluated myself what I want to do. I was 28 at the time. So I said I had some business experience, and I said, what do I love to do? And it was obviously golf. I had a business background. So I was fortunate that there was an event down the road in Boca Raton on Yamato Road, which was the Allianz Championship, which is a PGA uh, a golf tournament. So uh, what I did was basically I interned uh, pretty much unpaid for uh, four months, again, when I was 28 years old. 
So uh, I went in, I, I sent my boss a note. I said, hey, I love to work in sports. You know, that's my passion. He's like, we don't hire anyone off the street. He said, come in. If you want, come an intern. So I rolled the dice. You know, I had a little, little money saved, rolled the dice, an intern. They, they saw I had some business background and wound up getting hired uh, back in, I guess, 2008, 2009. So uh, from there, basically, I've been with the company uh, 11 years now. And uh, when I tell people, it's, it's, a, it's a dream job. But, you know, going back to Lynn University and then getting laid off at Tyco and the tax department and then the timeshare sheet, you know, really, you know, three perfect examples where, you know, I, I didn't want to be an accountant. I didn't want to be in the timeshare business, but it all led me to where I am now and uh, what I enjoy most doing. That's so it sounds, it sounds like your career has been one springboard after another, really. You know, that's why it was hard. You know, it says add one. It was hard to really pinpoint one. And then, you know, I know a lot of students are in the room and I was the same way as a senior. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And uh, it really, I got in the tax department. I just kind of tried to figure out, hey, you know, what can I get out of this? But I, I, again, yeah, every every uh, uh, experience on the road kind of led me to where I am now. I also think a nice theme that is important for the students to hear is that you were resilient through the process because it, it wasn't all sugar and it, you know the rainbows and there were times that I'm sure you were discouraged but you continued and and that's what led you to where you are today. Yeah, no, listen, it's been. Uh, I, I remember I think it was Blue Green when the economy tanked. I went to lunch and and I came back from lunch and basically had a brown corporate uh, cardboard box. They're like, all right, pack your stuff up and walk out. So. Definitely hits on you, you know, mentally, you know, your ego a little bit, but you know, like, and that's life, and uh, you know, and again, it all started at Lynn. Oh. Wow. Anthony, I, this is a little off subject, but um, the, you know, we live in a world of texting and email and you know, video chatting now. Um, and I heard you mention, I think twice, something about sending an actual card to thank somebody. Um, how important is that physical card still today? Yeah, Gary. I mean, I can't. Uh, I can't say how important I know important it is, and, and I see it in our world in any business really, and uh, and literally from that little piece of advice, I think that's what made me stand out to other you know uh, graduates or colleagues was taking the time to write know. and it's you know they're never fun, you know I mean it's a pain in the butt to do it and it's annoying, but I mean uh, I know people now that I mean, they write 20 notes a day, 50 notes a day, so I, I highly encourage it to any student and. Uh, yeah, to, and now obviously with, with the internet, you can get people's home addresses, their work addresses. So to be creative and send them, you know, even a, whatever it is, a box of chocolates, you know, so uh, very Alyssa important. That is a great example with that. Would you like to share? Well, I actually have an example that just happened to me this week. Um, I Every time we get an online order, I personally write a thank you card. It doesn't matter how many that day, I will write a thank you card. And one of the customers that you know that I sent a package to, she is in Vegas, and she took the time out of her day um, to email me saying that I applaud you for the way you're managing and running your business. The packaging is beautiful, and having a written card I was so unexpected. So she really applauded the way we, you know, we we kind of add that personal touch. And that's something that I don't ever want to let go of, no matter how you know much we grow. Um, but it just, you know, I, I think there's still something about that handwritten note. You know, emails are fine, a little text is fine, but that handwritten card, that's like a lost art now. And I think people really appreciate that that personal touch, especially now, you know, during the COVID days, you know, where we are social distancing. It's it's a nice personal uh, touch. Yeah. Great. In terms of that personal touch, though, I know that yesterday you mentioned the video that you've done, and I think that's an interesting spin to tell the students as well. Yes. Yeah, so um, that's right. So, you know, one thing that's challenging when you start a business, and it's still a, probably our biggest challenge now, is getting to the decision makers at these big brands. You're talking, you know, luxury brands. And Sarah Jessica Parker was is really still a really great example because how I got to her is um, instead of emailing just a regular mundane email with all my company information, product information, and just really kind of doing information overload, I typically will do 30 second video greetings. So it's basically a selfie of me like I'm doing right now talking about my product and wouldn't it be great to have a SJP private label shoe stuffer, blah, blah, you know, and I kind of, do my quick 30 second shark tank pitch kind of thing. And 
you know, I, I think um, it, it works in a lot of instances because these people are getting hundreds and thousands of emails a day. So, you know, just to get their attention. And, and again, we're going back to that personal touch, you know, and you're, you get to see the person behind the message. And, you know, I, I think it's always nice to put a name to a face. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, hey, Gary, so I, I, just want to, I, I just want to add on the second part of the question was, sure. did I, did I, you know, did I expect it or did, you know, to, did I expect anything out of it? And, and I didn't know where, you know, some of these jobs were taking me, but, you know, I think if the whole thing was, you know, you make the best of where you are and you, know, you kind of trust and believe what you're doing and, and look at the positives. So I didn't expect to be, you know, in this job, but, you know, you, you kind of, you know, the timing, the, the economy tanked a couple of times and you look at the positives and take, you know, the, the uh, experiences out of each job that you could apply to what you ultimately want to do. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. And and doing doing the best job you can possibly do wherever you are, because you know that that will come that will follow along with you too. Yeah, and some of the things are pretty. I've never seen Eva. I mean, I've been up to the breakers, and it's 95 degrees out, and she's got a baseball. I mean, that's pretty. She is. She's got a baseball cap on. She's sweating. I mean, that's not fun. You know, especially from a female. You know, and you know now look at her now. But it's sometimes you just gotta. You know, they call you know eat shit, and you know. <laughs> Also, I think too that when you don't quite know what you what you want to do, but you have an idea and you're going on this idea, um, as you learn and as you grow in each position, things start to click and you start to find a pattern of what you enjoy or what you don't like about things, and that's okay too. But things kind of come um, into fruition for you, and you just sort of start to understand. Um, and then, you know, you try and get further and further with that information that you're developing. That's Excellent. great too. Excellent. Well, thank you. So now okay. we'll move on to the next question. Okay. So what do you think was the most single, most important experience or job that helped you get to where you are today? That's a tough one. Okay, <laughs> Eva. I actually... <laughs> I love this question personally. Um, okay. There is one specific, I guess, um, you know, thing that I, I did in my life that I truly think um, built up my personality and confidence and understanding so much. And that was uh, studying abroad. So when I was at Lynn, um, we always had wonderful study abroad programs, Lynn being as international as it is, is so fun and helped me learn so much and really helped me appreciate a lot of things. And um, when I did a study abroad, it was just nice to live. I went to Copenhagen, Denmark, and I lived there for eight months. Um, it wasn't a typical study abroad. Uh, not too many people went to Denmark. Um, but it was, it was perfect. And I was able to go to school. Um, we had a, an institute of study abroad that the Americans went to school at, but you could also choose if you preferred to take classes at a Danish institute, um, which I took one class, an international business class at Copenhagen Business School. Um, and it just, it taught me so much just to, to be a part of a different culture and just change everything that I did for, and everything that I knew for eight months. Um, and then within that time, I was able to travel throughout different places in Europe. And it was an experience that completely just shifted uh, so many things for me and, and put so many things into perspective and then actually kind of made me sort of hungry to travel more and learn more about different places and different cultures. So I just kind of kept going with it. And here I am in tourism. All right. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? So you got out of your comfort zone, it sounds like. Without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and then ultimately now you're, now you're bringing people to the Palm beaches, which is just such a interesting fate right exactly yeah. exactly yeah. and part of my job is being able to travel and and um go places and talk to to people so it's it's exactly perfect right Excellent. great great example another example of really a springboard yeah yeah my, my answer is actually the same as eva's i studied yeah. also for uh close to nine months my junior year and I studied in Beijing, also a place that in 2004, nobody really 
was going to, China was still kind of this unknown world. Now we're hearing about it everywhere and not necessarily in a good way, but um, it was such an amazing experience. And I got so into the culture and learning Mandarin as a third language that um, I ended up moving there as soon as I graduated from university. And it was supposed to be just a one year, year you know, just a one year thing. Let me uh, work there, get some experience and then go to law school. But one year turned into 10 years. So I actually <laughs> been there for 10 years and I definitely don't look back, you know, no regrets. Um, you know, I can't see myself being a lawyer, actually. I hate confrontation. So, um, so it was really great. But, you know, just like Eva, you know, it was such a great experience. I did the homestay, um, you know, I did homestay. So I lived with a wonderful Chinese family. So I really immerse myself. And, and I think, you know, because I studied Mandarin and I really, you know, understand to an extent um, the mentality and the culture there, um, it's helping me now work with my production team, which is based in South of China. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's, uh, it's definitely, you know, you look back and really everything is a springboard. You don't really know where you're going, but as long as you're just resilient and you're persistent and you just keep going and you just believe that you're in the right direction and you, you are where you should be at this moment, I think everything falls into place. Um, so, and I, and I think when you study abroad and, and you're in a foreign place and you really have no clue, you don't understand really what's going on, you don't understand the language, you have to develop survival skills. And that's those survival skills help you in your job environment, you know, and 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 learning how to deal with people and interact and think on your toes. So, you know, I, I think that those are all really useful skills that you don't you'll need for the rest of your life. That's great. Lots of reflection. In in your case, you you said that you do a lot of manufacturing in in China, right? So I'm sure that that has been an awesome help to you having. And, and a cut above the competition, knowing the culture as well as you do. No, absolutely. And again, it's forming that relationship. Like I've, yeah. I've been working with the same production team for three years and I, I go and I visit and I sit down on the floor and I look and I, I analyze the bows and the amount of cotton that goes in. And, you know, we've been able to, to, to build that relationship. So they're willing to go above and beyond when I have a special request, if my quantities are not as high as they would like, but they know that, you know, I'm very consistent. So, you know, it helps in, in terms of building the relationship. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Thank you. So we do have some questions from the audience, but before we go to those, Anthony, did you want to answer this question? Sure. So I would highlight, uh, like I mentioned earlier, when uh, back in 08, when I actually interned, you know, I lost the job in the, in the timeshare business. And I went to intern. And again, a lot of my friends, you know, I was 28 at the time. A lot of my friends were making you know, six figures up in New York City, work for banks, working 15, 16 hours a day. And I, I went to work. I was making like it was 250 bucks a month on a stipend, a small stipend. So um, I would say, you know, when, when I went to intern at, again at 28 and, uh, you know, I would just emphasize on, uh, you know, you talk about kind of not an experience, but really skill, but networking. So that one of the, way, the ways I got to that job or was got to you know meeting the, the head director was it was a former my former boss at a former uh, a former job I had he said go and go and meet Ryan he's the head guy and then and then Jeff who was my former boss at the golf course sent the note to Ryan said hey listen Anthony's a good kid give him a shot so I just you know I, I again I went to school at Lynn and I can't emphasize enough on you know networking uh, one with your peers you know a lot, a lot of you know one with your peers you know get to know your classmates get to know their families where they're from. And the other part is get to know Barb, you know, Barb and Stephanie and Dr. Carlin, take them to lunch, take them to coffee. But, you know, again, there's a lot of good, uh, you know, uh, resources uh, right in front of you. So, uh, yeah. That's great. And that actually goes to one of the questions that a student has. This student is talking about how he recently interviewed for a job and unfortunately he did not receive the job. But he's asking, do you all feel that failure is essentially a part of growing and becoming successful. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, That's, you know. uh, I, I, I'm sure a lot of the listeners. So I just came across that Gary V on Instagram. Gary V, and he calls them the big L's. 
you know, you see the losses, you know, and it's, you think about it, I got fired three times and it's not, I mean, I hope to think it's not because of me, but you know, stuff happens in life. So 100%, I mean, it's going to happen to everyone. I mean, you look at any of the successful people, you know, on this call or in, in life, it's going to happen. So you just take and make the best of it. Yeah, I can, I mean, I can certainly add on through a personal experience, um, the position that I held uh, at the breakers right before uh, coming to discover the Palm Beaches, I actually applied for that position three times. Um, so for the first two times, it was uh, either a, a different candidate was, um, you know, a better choice or a better option. And then, but I really wanted the position. I mean, I was really passionate about it. And it was a side of the sales that I hadn't known anything about. Um, so I was on the leisure side of the reservations team and I wanted to be on the group side of the reservations team. And so I just continued to apply and then uh, receive the position. But I think I think failure can help drive you and it can help you keep going. So it'll it'll give you the fire that you really need and should have and, and hopefully want when you're when you're applying and trying to get to your next step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and from an entrepreneurial perspective, you know, here we, you know, I'm obviously saying all the positives. These are the milestones. These are all the great things that we're doing. But at the same time, there's so many failures. We got so many no's by other retailers and brands. And, you know, some people saying, oh, that's a silly idea. Like, I don't care about my shoes. So, you know, we get, I get that all the time. So, you know, we, we on Instagram, on social media, we're always posting all the wonderful things, right? And the beautiful images, but there are sweat and tears in the back. And, and I think that what defines you is just how you deal in those situations and just persistence. You know, you just got to be persistent and consistent. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and you have to believe in yourself. I, I think if you don't believe in yourself, then, then you, you're, you've, got, you've, you've got some challenges. You know, as long as you believe in yourself, then, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. I love yeah, that persistence. One Consistent, no, resiliency, and then also passion is so significant in all of this. And um, that goes very much to another point that a student is bringing up. Anthony, I'm going to let you lead this just because you started off by saying you're at your dream job now. So clearly you have passion for the job that you're currently at. And this particular student is saying that since he was a young child at the age of six, he's always loved golf and golf operations and marketing. And he would love to know how you got your foot essentially in the door and what a typical day is like for you in your current job. Perfect. No, it sounds like we need to hire him. So yeah, I'd love to stay in contact. You can provide my email, cell phone to him, but yeah, we okay, actually we are, looking for, we are looking for interns. So I'd yeah, love to have him involved. Uh, <laughs> to answer the question again, I was around golf. My, you know, I was sports. I love sports, and I was an average student, BC student. And you know, again, uh, to to find my way to do what I do now, um, it all led through you know some self discovery, some failure, um, and then like I said, when I was 28, I realized, hey, you know, I don't want to be doing you know, I don't want to be doing tax returns. I don't want to be in the timeshare business. You know, I, my passion is golf and sports. So I was able to marry uh, you know marry them both together. And, and for me, it's a dream job. And like I said, I'm every day I, I talk golf, I you know play golf, I come home and watch golf. So it's it's in you doing it. And it all goes back to doing what you love to do. I mean, again, and I have a younger brother and sister. When they came out of school, they always said, I want to make 80000 I'll make 100000 And I say, listen, just find out. And it's so cliche and everyone says it. But, you know, once you do it, and I'm sure, you know, Olivia and Eva could attest to it, it's um, – it's what you really got to come down to is, is do it every day. Find what you love to do when you have passion and, and, uh, and do it every day. Did I answer that question, uh, Stephanie? I think you did a great Thank job. You. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to just add to that, that point about going back to the failure question and, and what you just said, Anthony, that if you're following your passion and you're following your dream, um, those could be considered setbacks, not failures right along the way. And as long as you're staying focused on a dream, then you, you are succeeding as you go along. Right. So yeah. Olivia's being turned down by a few chains here and there. Not, you know, that's a setback for sure, but you're doing something you really love doing. So you're already successful, right? You may not yeah. be successful with that particular sale, but in general, you're a success. Exactly. Like and like I'll go back. I think the other part was how did I get there? And, and again, before I went intern in the year, you know, 07, I believe it was, I went and volunteered. 
and, and you know that you know every tournament needs volunteers. So I was able to go, you know, meet some of the you know get understanding of the whole business. But point being is, you know, sometimes you just gotta, you know, go help out, go do things that no one, like I mentioned earlier, do things that no one wants to do. And if, if you love dogs, go, go, you know, volunteer at the Humane Society. You never know where that's gonna take you. And sometimes you gotta do it for free, or sometimes you gotta do it for little money. Yeah. Okay. It's a great thing, and it looks great on resumes. Yeah. Volunteer yeah. work looks great on resumes. And Blake, you might be getting an internship out of this. So <laughs> that's, that's an important part to make. Many of you in here right now listening to this, this could be a springboard moment for you. You might have that aha moment just listening. Yeah. Well, I know we have a, at least one hospitality student listening in that is probably tuned into Eva's story. Um, so I won't, I won't mention her by name, but I'm sure she's listening. <laughs> Next question. Do you think that you were going to be where you are today when you graduated school? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Not Does anyone have, have this in mind when the day they walk <laughs> through this day? No. For I said I, I dual majored in a political science and Chinese Mandarin. So um, to end up working at a magazine and running my own company. Uh, and being the shoe stuffer lady. No, I, I never thought that, that would be my, my faith. And you know, it's gonna be interesting to look 10 years, 20 years from now, because I'm sure we're gonna be all of us where, you know, somewhere that we didn't ever foresee ourselves being at. You know, I, I think that's the magic and the beauty and the excitement of life is really not knowing where the road is going to lead. But again, just believing in that journey. Um, but no, but again, you know, looking back at you know, all those springboard moments and all those failures and successes that we've had, you know, it it, 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 it makes sense. You know, Eva was saying it, it makes sense and it does. You know, when I look back at uh, on my time in China and working at a research institute at the university there and, and in marketing, I, no, I, I didn't know I would start protect my shit, you know, but, but, but I, I think that's what's exciting. So, you know, I just, uh, you, you just all the skills you learn though in school do help you i mean they're so vital so you know it i don't think it matters at the end of the day what major you end up graduating with because th there's so many essential skills that you are going to be using throughout your life yeah excellent point mm -hmm. yeah. yeah anybody else I, yes I, I mean i certainly didn't think that i would be here today i mean i've always liked sales as i mentioned and i I went to school for that and I, I really wanted to go ahead and, and be a salesperson of some sort. And I always worked in retail. I uh, loved fashion. I actually, when I started at Lynn, I started in the fashion program and then moved into more of a general um, sales and marketing program. But I slowly realized that putting the, the love for tourism and traveling and then the love for the county that I live in and the place that I live in and and seeing that oh you can you can sell hotels like it just slowly came in into into place great Anthony sure yeah I just got a little interrupted my my kiddos but uh all right all right all right come on I, I, I brought my five-year-old. I said, if you do not interrupt me during the call, you get a donut after this. <laughs> I, 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 school, I, I think Vegas had a lot of good bets that they would come in and break up the. Uh, I took the. I took the over. So. Uh, <laughs> they, they, made, they, made, they made thirty-seven minutes, which I guess uh, gets, gives them maybe a cookie. But uh, sorry about that. But to uh, no, you know, I I had no idea where I you know would be doing this today. But you know, it's funny is you know. Um, you know, I had an idea. Like I always wanted to work in sports. You know, I played sports my whole life. Always part of my life. So, but I didn't know if I wanted to work for the Yankees or, you know, you know, for the the, the New York Knicks. But <laughs> it's funny. And and when when they were asking me to the webinar, I actually went into. I kept a lot. Of, I'm a keeper. I'm a hoarder. But I found actually a, a paper that I wrote my senior year in in college at Lynn with it was business communications with Malvatano. And basically, it was it was prepared um, um, career questions. It was just an extra. It was a homework assignment. And literally, it says, you know, I'm, I'm a senior at Lynn University, and what do you want to do? And it says, if I'm not playing golf for a living, you know, I want to work in sports. We're playing working golf. So I had no idea I'd ever get there, you know, working for the PGA Tour or where I'd be. But I think 
having that idea and, and you know a lot of people say write things down but it's just funny to go back again this paper is a little yellow but this is back in 2002 and it says what i wanted to do so um again the road the road is always winding and i think i get there and there's like i said there's a lot of trials and tribulations how i got there but um again i i had no idea what i want to do when i was 22 or 24 26 even you know and uh like as, as the ladies mentioned you know you do the things you do and you put yourself in the right surroundings and these opportunities come to you yeah i think you know from from kindergarten we're conditioned to sort of predict what we're going to want to do in our lives right i remember having to draw a picture of what i wanted to be when i grew mm -hmm. up when i was in kindergarten and i was like how do i do that you know i don't know what i want to be <laughs> what did you draw, Professor Carlin? I drew, I drew a veterinarian <laughs> because I love, I love cats. <laughs> I do love cats. Ironically, my son, speaking of children that are five, he just graduated from preschool and they had to say what they want to do when they grow up. And he says he wants to be a lawyer. And if that doesn't work out, then he wants to be a Power Ranger. So. <laughs> <laughs> But I think the point is that we're, you know we we're conditioned to try to know or to think we know, and the reality is that people don't know. Right. Right up until you know, I mean, forever probably. I mean, people are changing their careers in, at any age, right? And again, I think that a lot of it goes back to some of the points that all of you have made that it all is a road that eventually leads you and it becomes a full circle. So for instance, me personally, my background was in journalism and I thought I was going to be a journalist. The beat that I covered was education and I always loved students and I'm not going to go into my whole career path, but it all ended up coming together and I'm now teaching but I'm, I'm teaching journalism and, and we all have stories like that. But when I graduated, I did not know that that's what I was going wow. to end up doing. So our last predetermined question, which is one of my favorites, is uh, can you give us examples of people that have helped springboard your career? So we've talked a lot about events in our lives uh, or jobs in our life, but what about specific people that springboarded your career? Mentors, I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it I, I kind of mentioned it already. I'll, I mean, not to, get, get Eva. I'm sorry you saw your hand go up. No, 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 no. Go for it, Anthony. Take it I, away. I just, go, <laughs> I just go back to, uh, again, you know, my professor at, at Lynn is Chris Malvitano. And, uh, and again, he became a mentor. And uh, like I said, a lot of times, you know, even with the, the first example, he told me to do something. I did it. And then when I got laid off at, at my first job, I, we had lunch at Houston's again. And he kind of told me what to do and kind of prepared. So I, I would say, you know, he's, you know, by far, you know, one of the, the people I could thank or owe to, you know, um, the other one was my old boss, the golf course, Jeff Waver, who endorsed me to get my job now. But um, I think it just all goes back to, you know, finding a mentor, you know, one or two people in your life that you can go back to when some of these times, you know, you have hard times. And, and a lot of times it's not your mother, father, uncle, or cousin. I mean, it could be, you know, Gary or Stephanie or Barb. So I would just encourage mentorship. That's great. great Absolutely. Eva? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, it's a very small world. So you, you should be kind to whoever you come across because, you know, they may cross your path again. But I think, I think, and that's a, kind of an important thing that I've come across. I mean, obviously, I, I knew Anthony uh, well before this and full circle coming back and being able to do one of these webinars with him, for instance. But I think as a as some of the most important people in my life, um, my my family first and foremost is has always been there for me, and they are always my cheerleaders, um, especially my grandmother. And I think that that mentorship is extremely important and um, it can change, you know, based on the scenario and based on uh, positives um, and strengths for certain people. Um, and honestly, since coming to discover the Palm Beaches, my current boss has been an amazing mentor to um, my career building. Um, just listening to my ideas and you know talking to me and just kind of kind of working with me and letting me grow and that's been phenomenal and I mean everyone from my fiance to uh you know Anthony have helped uh kind of pave a path and create create a a, a path for me so 
Great. It's, it's kind of important for, for everyone to be a part of it. Yeah. It, it's so true. I mean, there's so many people along the way. So, you know, it, it's hard to pinpoint. But for me, the one person that I can obviously pinpoint is my mom. You know, she's, uh, I call her my senior advisor, but she's like, when am I getting paid? You know, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, she, she, she's really, you know, always there. I get to springboard ideas. You know, I get to say, what do you think of this? She's an interior designer, so she's very creative. Um, you know, so I definitely think my my love of, of fashion, of, of uh, design and just aesthetics, you know, really comes from her. She also has an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, she, you know, so... I think I learned a lot from her growing up. You know, we used to make jewelry when I was 10 years old around the dining room table. And then I would go sell my beaded jewelry door to door or at the flea market. So, you know, I, I think all those things kind of helped uh, ignite that that entrepreneurial spirit in me. So I definitely would have to um, give a big shout out to my mom. And just from a, a job perspective, you know, uh, at Boca Magazine, I have to say that you know, um, just like Eva, you know, her boss has really kind of uh, been able to give her a platform. I think same thing with Boca Magazine. Our publishers have been really great. And, you know, they've listened to my ideas as well. And, and they've kind of let me create this role because they never had a community relations director before. So um, so that, too, has been really um, a great, you know, a great thing. But again, that happened because I met them through another circumstance. So I really think you just have to be kind and, and genuine along the way. Um, you never know who you're going to meet. You never know. So um, you kind of always have to be on. Yeah, always bring your A game. Professor yeah. Carlin, I know you love this question. So would you like to <laughs> you have anybody who's helped springboard your career? Well, you know, I, I love the examples that have been used. I mean, a, a teacher, a, a, a mom, my mom, my dad, uh, being kind to people. I think those are all really great, great examples and great, great advice. Uh, my particular one was, in, in addition to those people, um, was a really bad review I got in my first job at Hasbro. And um, my boss, the woman, and um, she gave me a bad review, an annual review. And I was devastated at the time, you know, I was literally devastated. She told me I wasn't passionate about in my presentations. I wasn't sort of owning what I was saying. And at first I really rejected it, you know, not to her face, but you know, to myself and thinking how dare she, and I'm the best and, you know, except, you know, all the things you think when you're young. Um, and then I started to take it to heart and uh, I talked to her again about it and realized that what she said really made a lot of sense. And she literally changed my career. I mean, she, this one person in that bad review catapulted my career, both, both at Hasbro and beyond, you know, because she was honest with me and because I listened. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I owe a lot to that. I, w I wish I could tell her, I wish I could be in touch with her to tell her that because I don't think I said it enough at the time. I had the same, oh, sorry. Professor. No, no, please. <laughs> no, I had, th this reminds me um, of my of this a similar story when I was in second grade. I got caught <laughs> cheating on a, <laughs> a French school, and French school is incredibly difficult. So you know, I'm like, I got caught cheating, and and you know, I was having a hard time. So my teacher uh, called my parents and said, "Do you mind if you know I sit down with Olivia and have a conversation?" And my mom said, "Yeah, sure, go ahead." So she pulled me aside during, you know, um, a break time. And she just said these, this one sentence. And I don't know, it resonated with me. From then on, everything made sense. She goes, sometimes in life, you have to overcome obstacles. Hmm. And from then on, I was a straight A student. I was not cheating. But, you know, again, it's those defining moments, you know, the, the good, the bad turns into the a, a good yeah. important moment. So if you, especially if you're willing to listen, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're willing to really listen and take take that feedback to heart. Yes. Exactly. That's important for our students to recognize that sometimes the negativity is OK, because that will eventually transition into other things. Like you said, take those obstacles. Dr. Powers, do you have a story? Well, I definitely have a mentor that I think um, anybody who knows me knows the name because I talk about her all the time. 
So uh, Dr. Kathleen Cheek Milbean, she was the provost when I started working at Lynn University and I worked directly under her and um, she really made me who I am today. I, I appreciate her so much. I still am in frequent conversations with her. We've done lots of Zoom chats and discussions um, throughout this whole COVID-19 pandemic. And she's, Eva, just like you said, and of course my family, I have a wonderful family, my mom, but she's a cheerleader for me and she gives me real advice and it's not always necessarily what I want to hear, but it's what I need to hear. I just recently finished my doctoral program and she was one of the reasons why I went back to school, one of them, because she kept telling me, get that education, you need to do it. And um, she's just a mentor that I definitely look up to. I have a question for the panelists. Do you think that um, for, for for the students' uh, help, uh, do you think that students should seek out mentors, or do they just happen, or is it a little bit of both? I think that's a great question. I go ahead, Oliver. No, sorry, Eva. I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, I, I think sometimes you have those individuals that, you know, like you know, angels. They just happen to walk into your life and um and sometimes you do have to seek you know mentors as well you know that might be uh, more strategic you know for me i have a board i have a, an advisory board you know so a few advisors that you know are really great in their industries they're leaders so you know they're they're willing to give time um to kind of give me an outside perspective um so so again it, it's you know it, it, i think it's both Yes, I, I mean, I, I think it's important to have a mentor, whoever that is, and however they, um, you know, however they come across your path. Um, and you, you just kind of, I think for me, most of the time, it just sort of happened naturally and I found them. It was certain things about a person, um, their traits that uh, resonate with me and I, and I, feel are, are similar to mine and the way that I think and uh, about things and see things. So um, just kind of having that role model and being able to sort of kind of monkey see, monkey do, I guess, for lack of a better term, um, but kind of mirror yourself after them um, successfully. Yeah, I would just add, I mean, exactly what, what Eva said. And, and in the process, I mean, it's not like you go, hey, Gary, I want you to be my mentor or hey, <laughs> Stephanie, I want you to be a mentor. Like it happens naturally. And once you identify a couple of people that you enjoy, you admire, you may want to see yourself being like in 5, 10, 15 years. And, and it happens. And I think at the end of the day is people, especially in the careers, they want to give back. They want to help. They want to advise. And, and, and especially now and ever, you see all, a lot of these executive coaches or whatever, they're doing a lot of stuff online for free. They want to give back. They want to be able to help. So I think, you know, and you can have more than one. It could be maybe someone that's, you know, older or, you know, and actually, you know, funny, go back to, you know, professor and he passed away, but he was a, prof a PR professor at Lynn. Um, I just drew a blank on his name. Um, anyway, he, he was just, he was, a, I had one PR class. He was just great. And I remember I sat back one spring break, uh, Dr. Bender, Coleman Bender. Bender. Yeah. Coleman Bender. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I sat back one spring break. This guy was maybe 80 years old and it was just one of these brilliant minds, but you know, again, I was just trying to find something I could learn from this guy. And he said, he, at one spring break, I sat back and he was doing a, a, a consulting class with a, all of Bank of America examples. So again, he's another one. I stayed in touch with the headlines with them and I go see him, you know, we had coffee. But I, I think again, to, to both of the ladies, just, it happens, you know, identify a couple of people you want to learn from or you admire and, 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 uh, and approach them. Don't be afraid to ask for advice, you know. Yeah. And you provide for their guidance. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, asking for help is really um, an important lesson learned in life, to be learned in life. Yeah. Ask when you need help, ask for it. Don't be afraid to ask. Yeah. You know, when I think of, of, of this topic and springboarding, and we're talking a lot about people, I think, that are mostly older than ourselves at the time, um, but I also find inspiration in my students. And, um, you know, they, they act as mentors in a way to me in a, in, a, in, a, in a different kind of way, but but they inspire me, they springboard me, they challenge me in ways that help me grow. So sometimes I think it can, you can springboard from younger people as much as older, more experienced people. 
Yeah, I agree with that too. In fact, I always go into class, Professor Carlin and I both do and say, it is not a good day unless we learn something and because they teach us so much and we're so thankful for all of our students. So absolutely. What an interesting, what a, I'll tell you, we've done four of these and uh, Barb Cambio is texting me <laughs> uh, privately saying this is the best one yet. And I, I really, uh, I really agree. This has been awesome. Like, yeah. you know, we, I, I feel like this was like authentic and not that the others weren't great too, but, but I feel like I've learned a lot from this session um, and listening to you guys has been amazing. Some of the wisdom that you've given us has been uh, terrific. Hi, Barbara. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shared our secret. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah, are, really, there but, are there any audience questions? Does anybody have any questions? No. I believe not. I like um, I liked how you talked. You're you're great people. Um, your stories are great, and uh, you helped me motivate me like to to start thinking and, and open my opportunities and um, mostly my mind. So thanks. Oh, oh that's great. Uh, thank, thank you, Juan. So much. Thank you, Juan. No problem. <laughs> And I yeah, just like I said, if anyone you wants to message personally on LinkedIn or text message, you know we're, we're you know we're always here. At least I'm always here and open to helping you know students. Again, we were all of us were in your you know your your seat in the seats where you guys are currently. So we understand what you're going through, and obviously now you know with times more challenging than ever. So we're here to help. Yeah, absolutely. Same, same here, Barbara. You know, please feel free to share with your students my contact info. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you, attendees. We appreciate you all attending. And we thank you so much, everybody and the panelists, of course. Thank you all so much again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Lots of thank yous coming in. <laughs> <laughs> this was so good. Yeah.